All right, let's do this. Hello, welcome. Uh, welcome back to school after half term. I don't know if half term was really long or really, yeah, it's gold class waving at me to say they can hear me, always good. Thank you guys. Uh, I can't believe it, half term has already finished. It went in a blink of an eye. Was it really long? Was it really short? Nobody quite knows. Either way, I loved half term. Nice to get uh, you know, your batteries recharged, ready for another term of school. And the great news is, obviously, we uh, learnt on Monday that we'll all be back together very soon, which is excellent. So, children, we are very much looking forward to having you back. Um, parents, I'm sure you're very happy that your children are coming back and uh, we can all get back to normal lessons in school, uh, which is just fantastic. We can't wait to give you all the details of how that's going to work soon. But right now, it's time for assembly. And I'd like to give a, a little shout out to um, Nico in year six because he gave me the idea for this assembly. I asked for people to give me ideas for assembly and um, I really liked his idea. He wanted me to do an assembly on um, William Harvey, the, the person William Harvey, who you can see here. He is this old, well, I don't say old, he might not be old, but obviously he was born hundreds of years ago, so I guess he's old. Um, but this uh, fine looking gentleman here with his hair, very jealous. And he was a great scientist and he has some local relevance, which is why I was quite excited to do this um, assembly. I think in years gone by, year six have actually learned a little bit about William Harvey during their blood heart topic. And if you don't learn about him in year six, you will definitely learn about him when you're doing uh, biology at secondary school because he is rather important for a, a couple of reasons. So let's learn about him because he was a pretty uh, epic uh, bloke. Right, let's, let's have a little butcheroo, see if I can move my screen on. There we go. We, right, so when I say the word William Harvey to a child, the first thing you probably think of is the hospital. Most of you probably were born there. Um, Peggy was born there very you know special place for a lot of people uh, hospitals are odd places because wonderful things happen there and obviously awful things happen there so um, but it is nonetheless an incredibly important place within the community because it helps to keep us all safe no more so than at the moment obviously we are applauding people in the streets who work at hospitals like the William Harvey for their bravery uh, and they're just exceptional dedication to the health of their communities, which is wonderful. So well done. If there's anyone out there watching from William Harvey, good job. Um, we love you. And um, William Harvey is obviously named after the man William Harvey. So if you've ever driven into the William Harvey Hospital and looked at the sign and gone, it's a funny name for a hospital. Why is it called William? You know, it's not like my house is called Bob. Uh, why does the hospital get a name? Well, it's actually named after a person. It's named after William Harvey. And William Harvey is this man. He didn't look exactly like this. I should. We're taking some historical evidence based on paintings, really. He had grey hair, he had a beard and a moustache, and he often wore black. I mean, you know, for all I know, he was mad into yellow and orange clothes, but no one painted him like that. So this is what we've got. This is what we think he looked like as with all things historical. But he was a pretty cool dude for his time. So if he's a cool dude, he needs some sunnies. He needs a dude hat. There we go. This is how I imagine he was uh, bowling round in the um, 16th century. So there he is with his hat and his glasses. Uh, but why was he famous? What did he do? Why have we named a hospital after him? Why is that hospital in Ashford? Who knows? Let's find out. So he was born in 1578. That is a long time ago. Anyone who wants to uh, can work that out. How old is he? I'm going to give you 0.7 of a second to work that out. Okay, so he was born on April Fool's Day, uh, April 1st, and he was 442 years, 10 months and 23 days ago. So if you got that in the 0.7 seconds I gave you to do it, well done. If you didn't, then, you know, never mind. Don't worry, uh, we'll move on. So, why Ashford? Why Ashford? Why is the hospital called the William Harvey in Ashford? Well, I'll tell you why. And that's because he was born in Folkestone. Huh. 
So he wasn't born in Ashford, he was born in Folkestone. Which is great for us, because we're all in Folkestone. And here's a photo of Folkestone. And if you ever needed proof that photographs can achieve great things, believe it or not, that is Folkestone. Yeah, look at that bright, sunny day, marina. It's like Monte Carlo. It's lovely. So um, uh, he was born in Folkestone, nice local lad. Uh, he went to school in Canterbury. Uh, he was quite rich. Back in the like 16th century, if you weren't rich, you probably weren't going to go to school. You certainly weren't going to go to university. So all the sort of famous people from that era were normally really wealthy because they were the only ones that were really able to go to like university and study stuff and learn. Um, it wasn't available to everybody. So uh, he was very lucky, he was very wealthy, born into a wealthy family, went to King's School in Canterbury, which still exists, one of the oldest schools in England, uh, one of the most expensive schools in England as well. And um, then he went to Canterbury University, which obviously still exists, in a slightly different form. It's the University of Kent and Canterbury University, they are different entities, but, you know, same place. And, um, and he studied... Uh, medicine and then he actually went off to Italy so he went to study with someone in Italy for a long time to learn how to be a physician which is like a posh name for a doctor and he was particularly interested in one particular part of the body now my background I've got on my screen might give you a little tip a little hint as to what part of the body he was particularly interested in uh, can anyone get it from the background no, none of you. No, no, no one getting it. No, no, I can't hear any of you. So I'm assuming absolutely no one's got an idea. So I'll tell you. Uh, it was the circulatory system, which is basically the heart and the blood and how your blood gets around your body. Obviously, your heart pumping it around your body. I'm not going to go into all of the biology stuff because they'll do that in year six during their blood heart topic. And it's a great topic, by the way. So look forward to that. If they still do it, I don't know. I might have just sold them out there. Um, but... The circulatory system is really important because obviously the blood in our body sort of keeps us alive. It's, it's quite an amazing thing. And he was the one who really discovered how it worked. Before that, I don't know what they thought blood was. They just cut themselves and red stuff came out and they were just like, what is that? I have no idea what that even does. So he was the guy who went, ah, you know, the heart pumps it around the body it carries oxygen, it keeps you alive, it helps heal you, it's very good. It basically it distributes food around your body so all of the parts of your body have energy and can live. You know, it's, it really does keep you alive. It's quite, it's quite phenomenal. Uh, so he developed the circulatory system, or you know, he, he discovered what it's meaning. Obviously the circulatory system has existed all the time. It wasn't like we were all full of honey and yogurt before he discovered blood, but um, uh, it was there. And he was sort of the one who sort of said, why does it go around the body? Why do we need this red liquid flowing from our heart all the way down to our toes? You know, what's the point in it? So he was a very, 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 very clever man. Because you can imagine back in, uh, you know, 1591 or whenever he was sort of, you know, dissecting rats to try and figure out what was going on with blood. He didn't exactly have great tools. He'd have had a rubbish little microscope. I mean, we've probably got more advanced tools in our school than he would have had to use to figure all this stuff out. So an incredible, incredible person to be able to have done that sort of discovery um, back in a time when really he had no technology to help him at all. Okay, what have we got now? Right, what is in your blood? Well, let's talk about blood for a moment. Blood is mostly water. Um, it's a fluid, it goes around your, your body, it's mostly water. Blood is slightly more acidic than water, but not by much. And, and it's got a lot of salt in it. Blood's got, actually, blood has got more salt in it than seawater. If you've ever taken a mouthful of seawater, I mean, I don't recommend it, it's very dangerous, but if you've ever got a bit of seawater when you're swimming in the sea, and it gets on your tongue and you're like, rah, 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 and it's really gross, that's all the salt that's in the water amongst other things around here but it is mainly the salt and um a lot of people are like oh, isn't that funny how blood is kind of oh, there's a lot of seawater in blood and people rec you know the theories are that we evolved from creatures in the sea i like to think that we look like pokemon from the sea and we evolved in a big glowing yellow flash and just became men 
but you know, and women, but I don't think that is actually what happened. Um, so ignore the Pokemon picture. And the other thing that's in our blood, which I think is super cool, is iron. And the reason why I particularly like iron is because iron, all of the iron on the planet, iron being the metal, you know, it's like a metal that you can make stuff from, actually doesn't come from the planet, believe it or not. Iron is an element which is created in one very specific place. And that is, I'm going way off topic, how did we get from William Harvey to supernovas? I have no idea. But So um, iron is created when a star, like our sun, our sun is a star, when a star explodes. So when a star explodes, like my gif there, it shoots, it showers out loads of iron. It just spew, vomits iron all over the universe. And that iron flies around and just forms planets. So when the Earth was originally formed from just bits of dust crashing into each other in space, a lot of that dust was iron from exploding stars. So although it's kind of always been here, I guess, it doesn't act, you can't make iron on Earth. You know, the iron that we started with when the Earth was first formed is the same amount of iron that we've got now. We can't get any more of it. You can't make it. It's just there. And the only way we're going to get more iron is if a meteorite lands on the Earth and has iron in it. In fact, they think because iron is quite sort of buried in the Earth, uh, the first tools that Neanderthals used to use to like hack, you know, spear leopards or whatever they were doing with, with spears, each other probably, um, the iron tips that they used to use at the beginning of the Iron Age, they reckon probably came from meteorites that they found on the floor because they wouldn't have been able to dig down deep enough to actually get it out of the ground. So that's quite exciting. They had like little star dust on the end of their spear, which is kind of cool. And obviously you've got essentially star dust in your blood because there's a lot of iron in blood, which is amazing, really. So next time someone talks about, you know, oh, you've got to make sure you've got enough iron in your diet, you just think, oh, I've got to make sure I've got enough stardust in my diet, which is absolutely awesome. So hang on, let me move on. So I was talking a little bit earlier about what they thought blood was before people like William Harvey actually discovered what blood was. And you can only imagine that the first Neanderthal, like caveman who tripped on a rock and busted his toe open and he's bleeding everywhere, he must have been like, what is going on? And he was like, Gary, caveman Gary, come and look at this. Look at, what is this coming out of my foot? And he'd have been like, oh, I don't know, but I bumped my nose on a tree the other day and the same stuff came out of my nose. And they'd have been like, what? Why are we leaking? They have no idea. A lot of ancient religions actually uh, sort of worship blood in a way, you know, because they thought it, you know, although they didn't know what it did, they were fairly certain that it, it is what gave you life. You know, if you injured yourself, obviously you'd get hurt, you'd lose blood, you'd get ill. So they kind of figured out, they didn't know what it was doing, but they kind of figured out that it was important. So they used to worship it. This um, carving I've got here is of a Greek god. So all of the year threes who do ancient Greece, you might recognise this. This is Medusa, um, who is not really a god, but is Greek mythology, obviously. And um, she uh, uh, she had like snakes for hair. And her blood, actually, I'm looking at it, those wings on her head. I'm not entirely sure that is Medusa, actually. I think the Google images might have lied to me there. But um, her, they were, her blood was supposed to be half poison and half sort of life-giving super fluid, you know. And if you got some of Medusa's life-giving blood, you'd live forever. And if you got some of the wrong stuff, you, you'd just die. So they were, you know... All the way back thousands of years, they've been talking about blood as being sort of really important for sort of being alive uh, or not. And, you know, very sort of strange liquid. So, yeah, William Harvey, dead important person, massive uh, scientist on the scene, named a hospital after him, comes from Folkestone. Very, very important. Discovered the circular, well, discovered how the circulatory system worked. Um and that's it. That's my that's my bit on William Harvey. Again, thank you to Nico in Year Six for that fantastic idea. Really enjoyed that. Um, if you've got anything else you want me to do an assembly on, do shoot it over in a little private message on Discord. Obviously, next week uh, is the last week of home learning. But
but I've, I will be continuing to do my live assemblies on YouTube um, for the classrooms uh, even when you're back because obviously we can't go in the hall so we are going to have to broadcast our uh, assembly so I'm either going to do it on discord uh, but I might keep doing it on YouTube because then we've got a, a bit of a record of them and people can watch them from home if they're not here all right that was great thank you so much to everyone for joining me uh, sorry for running over again I do like to waffle on especially when you give me a cool topic like William Harvey and um, I will see you all next Wednesday have a lovely day everyone and um, eight days to go Woo